Blessings, 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 blessings. Welcome forward to Reasonings right here at the Trail Life. I'm your host, the Great Owl, right here in my mountain gardens up in the hills of the blue St. Andrew, Jamaica. Yeah. And so today, on this awesome, beautiful, wonderful morning, I just want to say thank you, yeah, and love to all who are imbued in the light, sharing the light. In the last couple of weeks, in the last couple of, you know, videos, in between a few others as well, I started a series called The Living Person, right? Living Man, Living Woman. And, you know, we got a lot of responses both on the videos and also, you know, people just inboxing me. So the thing is, I want to continue forward on um, advancing the information because I did three videos, right? And so this is... Uh, continuation and uh, growth into know where I'm at and so we're gonna talk about on today's um, video the natural law because we already have the living person and we're gonna fit the living person inside the natural law instead of the constituted laws hallelujah of men and we're gonna as best we can show the differential between the natural law rooted in the living person and the constituted law rooted in the straw man or the straw person, the fictitious person. So one of the first thing is this. Most of us aren't really educated in the laws of the land because the laws of the land are codified in a codex called the constitution. I've always said over the years, and I'm talking 15, 20 years, I've been saying this, that that codex i.e. the constitution will. The constitution needs to be a part of the study material for all ages of Jamaicans because if it is where the laws of the land which enshrines the rights, responsibility and the security as it's suggested to us, I'm not saying exactly that it is this, then we should, be of, we should have access to this information to help to constitute the nature of our legal and lawful, because I guess there are two things, deportment, functionality within our society. It should naturally be a part of all of our education. Studying law at university, you don't have to study constitutional law. Let's just be clear about that. But I'm sure at some point, and I'm not a law student, so I don't know this. I'm just going over the top of my head from what I have gleaned from what has been inferred connotation. I'm not saying denotation that some part of the structure, i.e. premise to certain cases, corporate or otherwise, have a rooting in constitutional um, ru um, judgments, right? And as such, people go back to them as, as inference and reference. So there's always, in law, I'm supposing, that you would have to have this sort of reference point so to know something about the constitution. Laws are amended, meaning there is um, <coughs> adjustments made to them. So why would that be so? And we're talking about the constituted law. So why would that be so? Right? Well, it would be so because naturally people's understanding of how they are and the society, the time and space in which the law is constituted, people evolve, people grow. And so because of this growth in information and knowledge, the time and space in which a law was created sometimes no longer serves the current time and space that we are in. It's, we say it's outdated, right? However, some laws, obviously, and we're talking about constituted laws, are still enshrined upon the books and are seem to be foundation stones. So now that we understand that, most of us would not know the subtexts, the contexts, right, in the legal arguments and judgments that are presented. Both the argument, how the lawyer argues your innocence or your right, and how the judge adjudicates and makes a judgment. No one really knows the whole essence of the judicial process. Now, we can talk about that in terms of they got jurors, jurisprudence, which is supposed to be rooted really in jurisdiction, which is rooted in time and space and geographic location. But again, because most people aren't educated in the constituted laws, most persons in the regular context would engage the law either as a straw man being accused of something or as some form of subjunct clerk supposedly in this jurisprudence of my peer thing 
um, they would select you for jury duty and so really they give you some vague minor terminologies of how to weigh innocence or guilt. That being said, that's not a lot of people who are called up to be able to add to the you know, judicial process, constituted that is. So that is this construction and we don't know much about that. So we're not going to forthright make our argument based upon the dialectics and the delineations within constituted law. We just have to give it as a statement and a standard and a reference point upon which our argument of the living person and the natural law is based. So within all of this constitutional, constituted, we've got a straw man, which is a constituted idea of who a person is or who a person ought to be in a constructed state. Now, the state might not have existed 3,000 years ago, hence why laws are limited to a certain time and space wherein jurisprudence or jurisdiction comes in. Does it legally apply to you? Do they have the right to speak this authority over you? What gives them the right? Is it enshrined in something that is common law? But usually it's not. It usually is rooted in what we call admiralty law or the merc chant or the mercantile system, right? Which is law of the seas, you know, because there are many terminologies to refer to it in layman's term and in its actual reference terminology, connotation, denotation, and all the likes. Anyway, so admiralty law, there is a great statement that goes back for maybe the 1100s where it's called the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta is supposed to be the crown jewel of the mercantile system or the law of the seas or of admiralty law. <coughs> It is supposed to be rooted in a certain set of um, enshrined ideas in reference to the idea of who a person is at that time in specific delineation as it relates to peasantry and elites or the monarchal or the, the structure of um, in the powerful, right? Status, titles, labels. It goes back to equalizing these statuses in a legalistic argument that became somewhat subjectively lawful if it adapted under certain um, city-states, right? So the essence of it is that they structured an idea of who the peasant is in relation to the elite, who the elite is in relation to the peasant, or laws apply, which is fair treatment, right? Or yeah, fair treatment, how fair treatment applies, or it becomes arbitrary, right? Or it is um, secured, protected, and enshrined. So that is what the Magna Carta into the Admiralty Law, Law of the Seas is really rooted in, in terms of what we know on paper, in reference, connotation. Denotation has more specified edicts and such that, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to go there, but over my years of studying, hallelujah, I know this, right? I know where this legal system evolved from. And as such, because of this, lawyers, judges, paralegals, all are loyal to the system. It, it is a club, it's an institution that honors its own first. And how does it apply to you, the living person? Well, it doesn't apply, hallelujah, to you, the living person. It applies to the fictitious person. The person you believe yourself to be, to be cultured in those same nation states with these ideas of how personage and power and propriety should be, it is constructed under the prevailing idea of the most powerful, swift and educated and intellectual of these classes which then delineate what is lawful and what is unlawful, right? And they have a structure to secure their power. So basically, when you, the natural person, is taken in, you give up your right once you accept representation, hallelujah, and once you succeed to the straw man system, you have given up your natural right, the power of the living man. So let's go under natural law now, because we have defined and stuck the argument to the constituted laws of men. Let's look at natural law. Well, natural laws are um, immutable, hallelujah. And from these immutable laws that cannot be altered, that cannot be changed, that cannot be manipulated. So what would make these natural laws unalterable? 
Well, number one, they're not subjected to our perceptions of them, not altered by our perceptions of them, nor our applications of them. They are holy, sacrosanct unto themselves, every time producing the same result. And these are not enshrined in human perceptivities. These are known as the natural law. And the natural law, no matter how much time you approach it, if you take something in your hands and you let it go, it will fall to the ground, right? Or it will fall to the ground. It might take a little bit longer, you know, in terms of a feather, but eventually it's going to come to the ground. It's not going to stay in the hair. There's a natural law. There's a natural law that governs the whole process of biology. There's a law of gender that is the regeneration and the generation of the biological life. There's a law of correspondence, right? That, you know, cause and effect effectively that if you construct an idea, it will have a recurrent manifestation in actuality, right? So cause and effect. So these natural immutable laws like the laws of rhythm rhythmic vibration that all of us speak walk talk write on a vibrational frequency now we've codified it through the schumann resonance as 7.83 hertz or 8 hertz of planet hertz our planet heart terra firma is the resonating spectrum of harmony and health so we have a law of rhythm that keeps us in harmonization with the biological and the astrological the natural environment and so these laws are immutable and from these immutable laws we have inalienable rights so these rights cannot be taken from us because they're born into us the natural and living person because the natural and living person isn't governed by an opinionative subjunctive idea that is enshrined in anything that is the straw man the living man it's not your ideology that has constructed you you do not exist because you think you think because, hallelujah, you exist. The living man and woman, the natural man under the natural law, is governed under the law of nature. That is the spirit and the presence as functionality, biological. What is enshrined in the harmony and the well-being of the being? So this is enshrined as natural law, that we have inalienable rights, right to the resources of our environment because this is where we are from you cannot annex us from our environment we are the living person we are in the natural law the natural law applies to us if we toxify the body by putting non-beneficial substances in the body it will destroy us so therefore if we put non-essential or toxic thoughts in the body in the being enshrined as a forced or a reinforced ideology upon us then we are going against the natural law so when we accept that we are the words of reference on a piece of paper a connotation of the denoted being that is I am if you accept that that reference to you in inference is the actuality of who you are then you would have been outside of the natural law because you are now going to be augmented because you have now given right, open the door, given authority. You have acquiesced onto the idea that someone has designed of you. So now you will be represented by someone because according to the law, if, sh if you should err according to the constituted law and then be brought before a judge, once you go across the bar, once you open the gate, you've gone into the deep. Right? And you are presumed dead. Hallelujah. That's why bodies are what enter into prison. You are assumed dead. That means that you are no longer legally able to represent yourself because you are no longer the natural and living man because you have gone outside of the law of your own existence. Land, air and water. If you are upon the land, common law is rooted upon the land. That's why people who are considered traitors, you understand me, are considered in law lost at sea. You understand me? Because they have no right or bearing upon the governance of land, upon the governance of the beings who live upon the land. So the laws of nature is constituted immutably, inalienably, and bonded, means it cannot be broken to the nature, to the very aura, to the very essence of your being. The tenor of law is the natural law. Hallelujah. The tenor of law is in the living person 
It is not in the straw man. But if you consider yourself to be of the fictitious personality, the constructed ideology of saying you are of A, B, C, R, D, a nation state that was constructed 300 years ago or 500 years ago when your ancestry and your bloodline came for hundreds of thousands of years, then you would have dishonored, hallelujah, your mothers and your fathers and would have been living in a fictitious person and as wards of the state, you are non-descendable. That means that you cannot inherit the actual properties that bears the name of your ancestry. That literally is in your right to have the bearing of power and the right of power, an expressed right of power upon. We don't have these if you succeed and allow yourself to be referred to as the straw man as the fictitious person you would lose your inalienable rights you would have dishonored your mother and fathers and would have no claim to your heritage or to your estates so anything that is enshrined in constituted facts are pre-designed already constructed and could not refer to a living being that is eternal that is not fully constructible or designable i create designs Designs have not created me. The only being that has created me is the source of my being, which I represent in the honor of my faith hey, and my religious or my spiritual nature. We give homage, credence, and worship unto the divine nature. But beyond that construction, there's nothing that has been designed or constructed that I ought to acquiesce myself unto because it would have come from the living being, the living person. The living person is the law. Tenor of law is in the living person. And not understanding how these people have usurped divine law, divine nature, into a constructed idea is the reason why so many people are out there floundering around unable to be in control of their logos because they have thought themselves to be some constructed ideas enshrined in some connotation given to us as some constituted law when the law is in the living person and the natural law is the foundation of all of the enshrined laws of the living being nature has its laws that are immutable and we cannot just adjust them because we feel that we have the power so to do alterning alternative al Turing the native is where the straw man comes in, alternative lifestyle, that which is not enshrined in the natural law. So those are subject, subjunct and subject to the constructed laws, to the straw man, because those are fictitious persons. All of these modern terminology and gender, gender um, identity and such, believe it or not, those are constructed ideas and are copyrighted and enshrined under someone's prerogative. Hallelujah. And you might think I'm going overboard, but I would bear you to do the research to find out that it is so. Again, the idea of what the law is, is the construction of the powerful minds of the times, because times change. And we who refer to ourselves under a legalistic term, might not be lawful, but a legalistic term that infers we are property or we are descendants of property or propertied humans or sometimes not even humans to act to be accepted in the natural law because if you are human the natural law applies to you and they cannot do certain things to you but within a fictitious person we can be told that we are subhuman and being referred to as subhuman accepting your subhuman makes subhuman treatment lawful and authorized don't make it right so it was lawful to prevent aboriginals from reading it was lawful to keep us from owning property it was lawful to keep disenfranchised aboriginals called wards of the states or enslaved individuals away from economic opportunities to advance our families and communities because legalistically we're not human hallelujah legalistically we're not referred to and uh, any heritage, history or culture 
that is beyond interpretation of others because what we are doing we have not enshrined our nationality that which is in common law that which is the natural everyday existence as who we are we have codified an idea being educated in universities and institutions which promulgate non-human ideas upon us that promulgate the reference points of inference of connotation of others legalistically upon us that is not lawful hallelujah but we are growing up thinking that we are descendable property non-descendable property of certain individuals and as such we have no bearing upon the direction legally or lawfully of our nation state because it isn't our nation state wow do you understand these things we can't make the laws because it's not our nation state so upon knowing your true heritage your true culture your true ancestry your true estate as children of the Amaru as some refer as Hebrew Israelites if you know as Taino right if you know your heritage your actual family heritage for the last 500 years or a thousand years it would benefit you in living more in the natural law because you would have understood the seasons of how we farmed how we built everything resonates with the natural law like the law of vibration as I told you about the law of gender you know masculine and feminine right these are immutable and the inalienable rights that are derived from them relates to us the right to clean air water food clothing shelter that are somewhat um, codified in their codex in what we call human rights and they didn't even allow that for hundreds of years as I said the Magna Carta barely even refers to anything deeply stirring in the real soul because they're still referring in ideological terms to how they perceive individuals according to the place they were a couple thousand years ago supposedly right and so here we are now in so-called 2021 coming to the end of it accordingly and the law doesn't have tenure in its constituted nature in the individual it has tenure in the institution that is why they decide how you are governed and how their power will apply to your behaviors but tenorship of the law means that your behavior is enshrined in a natural law we are living beings and as such this is our home we draw value from what is here there's nothing that we can espouse construct create that is not already here we cannot create it we reconstitute and reconstruct it so the laws that govern us are the laws of creation it is already hallelujah the way in which we are it's the way in which we have come to this so one of the things the law the Lord wants me to say in all of this before I get out of this legalistic argument is this there's a very famous law that we ignore that is the law of good the law of good says if you through experience through nature allow that goodness to permeate hallelujah envelop everything all things will resonate in frequency in sequence with that goodness hallelujah so the living being one of the laws of the living being is to remember to be good to allow the highest vibration to become the nature of the being to be in sync with that vibration because that vibrational harmony is what creates the right outcomes in the living man it is what constitute the moral just and right principles that they have isolated in their constructivist ideas as these moral arguments but the reason why we are failing at it in the natural person is because we are applying it through moral edicts an ideology not an actuality of function in the natural law which is love unconditional love these states of consciousness allows an individual to get past the constructive ideas when people do you wrong because of love turn the other cheek you do not retaliate in a destructive and bring evil for evil you bring good 
for evil and cancel hallelujah the power of evil and the power of negativity isn't it strange that the constructed laws is more of the negative connotations of idea like thou shalt not it's always about when something goes wrong really enshrined are the ideals of the betterment of the person it's always the offenses and how to punish the offenses never how to transmute negative thoughts and behaviors into right functions and practice and behaviors and outcomes things enshrined in the living person in the natural law forgiveness we know that there's no offense without a recompense and that recompense is usually a cessation of that offense it is usually deference and not contention when it is in the natural law we learn that you err i err if we build up behaviors upon erring are making mistakes for a simpler term if we make up laws ideas and thoughts and sense of self upon not erring all we're doing is constructed constructing an idea for ourselves that makes us very defensive and so all we're doing is out there talking about what thou shalt not do to us but have forgotten what is our rights but no representing what our rights sorry but forgetting what are our responsibilities and what is your responsibility because you have constructed the state of mind as a defense mechanism based in fear right in negativity your laws will likewise be offensive be a, a, a oppression a, 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 a distraction to right harmony or to right state of being because that is the way in which the person has put themselves into the straw man into the activities of the straw man they've forgotten that love through forgiveness through understanding would have taught you okay I have erred you have erred so we shouldn't make our behaviors be around making mistakes but about correcting mistakes finding ways to have solutions to make amends right to make amends to our behaviors so if our laws are based in the natural law then forgiveness understanding kindness is a natural function of behavior it's just a natural function of who you are so as you grow more in your natural function then the law being enshrined in you will become manifest and a person will say here is a person of high character of a high quality of being not just a high status but a high quality of being so the experience within this person's aura will be of a high quality of high value all enshrined in the natural law the natural law means observing things in its true and right essence don't put opinions on it so much we are very opinionated along the lines of what's been constructed denotation is the actuality of information denoted facts denoted truth we are living beings but we interpret ourselves in terms of the constructed i am jamaican you're nigerian you're american or actually you're, you're european saying you're american right so all these terminologies in connotation in reference enshrined in these constituted straw men fictitious persons and as such people give them, themselves over to generations of entanglement under these systems and the essence of it is the natural law where the living person is enshrined is there live good with your fellow humans yeah? forgiveness true love unconditional agape love allow for the most beautiful state to permeate all states so forgiveness becomes the law not accusation you understand me these are the things enshrined in natural law immutable inalienable rights and responsibilities ascribed to the living being versus the constructed ideas of the straw man and the fictitious person that is given to us to control to divide rule stratify in status labels and titles so without any titles a man of no titles i give thanks through the spirit of the ruach hakodesh yahuwah present in the presence of nature and the natural law within me yahuwah be praised yashomashiach be praised
we give thanks for my ancestors, for my mother and father, for my generations in the spirit and in truth. May we keep on the path of righteousness. And until next time, like, share, subscribe to the Trail Life Experience right here on Trail Life Television Network. Love, light, and